Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk about self-driving cars. Now I've talked about these before but there's a, an important uh, consideration that uh, that I think really needs to be examined and that is how safe can they possibly be? Now I've said before that uh, for a self-driving car to be reasonably uh, beneficial, for it to really be objectively a, a better choice than typical human-operated uh, cars, that it has to have a lower incidence of crashes and other driving failures than uh, human operators. That is, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be better. Now, obviously, with a self-driving car, we can, with self-driving cars, once we get them to the point where they are better than human drivers and where they can cope with the unexpected stuff reasonably well, that is, uh, missing lane markings and, and obscured road surfaces and things like that, once we get them to the point where they can be uh, basically as autonomous as a human driver with less failures, then I think it's reasonable that we should allow them on the road. But there are some, some interesting uh, uh, problems with the way at least some of the proponents of these, uh, these, these cars are are going. Uh, these days it's all in vogue to have everything on the network, on the interwebs, the Internet of Things, everything talks to everything else. And they're talking about doing the same thing for traffic so that uh, each car communicates with all the other cars around it and uses that information to determine uh, its actions and therefore you can have intersections with no traffic control and and the cars just work out among themselves how to get through it and you have routing algorithms and so on that all of the cars participate in or you've got a smart network that when the car comes in it uh, joins up on the network and it takes its marching orders from the overall network based on what it identifies as its destination now these seem like brilliant ideas on the surface, but they have a fundamental flaw. They're requiring something that's the things that are under the control of third parties to behave all correctly. So you ha say you have either the central, so let's say you have the central control network for traffic in an area. Well, you, you need to trust that all the cars that come in and link up with it actually comply with the instructions of the, the central control. And it's not clear that you can actually rely on that. Uh, at least not to the point where it would be beneficial to have that central control network. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, if all of the participants in the network are good actors, they don't do things that they shouldn't do, that they actually comply with the rules, then you'll have no problems at all, and it'll work perfectly as long as the network is implemented correctly. And we will assume for the moment that it is implemented correctly, or at least correctly enough that it doesn't cause trouble, or that it can recover from it or that the the failure modes are a traffic jam rather than everybody dies in exploding cars or something like that. Now all it would take to disrupt that is one bad actor and by bad actor I mean one that says they're, they're uh, participating in the network and then doesn't follow the instructions they receive. As soon as you do that, as soon as you introduce rogue elements, you can no longer trust that central control system to manage the traffic at peak capacity. And by peak capacity, I mean maximum, uh, maximizing the throughput or uh, 
or the, I guess, the latency, the delay, uh, the, minimizing the delays, and you know, maximizing the, uh, the 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 overall capacity of the network. Uh, if you want to use this central network to maximize your transportation network capacity, you have to trust that everything is going to behave correctly. And you can't do that if any of the participants are under third-party control. And by third-party control, I mean something that can be modified by third parties or is coming in from outside of the network. If it's all stuff that's part of the network and is all controlled by the party running the network, then you can you can actually uh, consider uh, operating that way. But as long as you have random third parties coming through, you cannot do that at the peak capacity. You cannot trust that this third party thing coming in at 60 miles an hour to an intersection is going to slow down to 56.2 and while this other one blasts through and therefore avoid the collision by inches. You cannot do that because you can't be sure that these third party things are going to actually behave correctly. And sure, you could build in protocols where the, you know, the thing has to uh, accept, uh, you know, indicate its acceptance and so on. And you can flag rogue elements uh, in, in the system so that uh, the system can avoid them and so on. But that basically means you've got to have the intelligence to deal with rogue elements anyway. And then what do you do if the central system is compromised somehow? And this is an important factor as well. If you, if you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of independent, auto mostly autonomous uh, cars, I guess, on the transportation network, all coordinated through the central system, if someone wanted to cause a massive tragedy, all they have to do is hack into that central system and they can cause a major catastrophe. They can cause, faster than anybody can react, they can cause a, a, a large number of these cars to smash into each other, cause massive accidents and massive loss of life. So that means that the central system has to be bulletproof. Uh, and, but the problem is, it also has to communicate with potentially untrusted third parties. And that means the communication protocols have to be bulletproof. It means there can't be any bugs in the software. And it means that physical access to the control system has to be well regulated. You can't have untrusted people there. Uh, so. Uh, so while it'd be perfect to air gap it so that you you know nothing can reach it, well you can't do that if it needs to deal with the information coming in from the outside world in a timely manner. So uh, it really, when you get down to it, this centralized traffic control system probably is not going to work at peak efficiency, especially since the autonomous vehicles are going to have to have safety protocols in place in them so that they can identify when the instructions from the central network don't make any sense and not follow them. So if the, the central network is telling the, the car on the road to plow through an obstacle like a, a barrier or drive off the road or something like that, it needs to have enough smarts to realize it's being asked to do something insane and realize that it cannot trust that instruction. So, so what, what can we do here? Well, we could also have uh, get rid of that central network and you get that single point of failure out of there and then you can have all of the autonomous cars talk to each other. Well, this would probably work a little bit better because in this case, one bad actor can't 
des can't destroy the entire network, especially in the face of some safety protocols. Uh, and you could have some smarts where the uh, the cars that are near some uh, some rogue element can uh, report that there's something not right and and so on and and you can have some avoidance uh, algorithms and so on. But this is again going to trust that the self-driving cars can communicate with each, with each other reliably with everybody on the road and know about everybody on the road. That means you can't have any any cars that don't have transponders. You can't have any obstacles on the road that you can't track. Now, it's technically possible to do that. You could have, uh, for the most part, you can have absolutely phenomenal surveillance of the entire network that's going to be under this system. And then you can detect most of these obstacles pretty easily. Uh, but you need a massive uh, system to do that, and that system you'd have to trust it. Now, you could use the uh, cars themselves uh, as the sensors. In fact, you probably would, because they're going to still have to have those, those systems for avoiding collisions and so on. And also identifying where the road is and staying on the road, staying in lanes and so on. Because even if you have fully autonomous uh, vehicles, you are still going to have to have the same basic road structure with lanes and all of that to manage the traffic. Uh, the reason we use the lanes is because the traffic has to go in different directions and, and that's the easiest way to get ordered capacity on a road surface. And as a result, autonomous cars are likely going to be doing the same exact thing because it's easier to manage than a total chaos. Now, uh, since and now we also have to have systems where these autonomous vehicles assuming we want fully autonomous automobile operation where they can get away from the when there's no other traffic around it still has to be able to operate so in the dead of night in a city when in in a residential area there may be no traffic around to see anything uh, to coordinate. So it still has to be able to navigate. It has to identify roads, avoid obstacles, and so on, even in the absence of other vehicles. So we have to have all of those systems and all of those smarts in the self-driving car in the first place. So that's all there. And yeah, anyway, it has to be. So We've already got that, and now we're going to add additional control systems to take over to make dense traffic work better or something like that. Well, maybe that could work, but, may, but I think more likely what will work is advisory information presented by nearby vehicles and so on, information that is not used to, co to actually actively coordinate, say, intersections and so on. We just use the standard intersection type protocols at the intersections. So stop signs and that sort of thing. Roundabouts. Roundabouts would probably work a lot better with autonomous cars than they do with people because autonomous cars can make decisions a lot faster about what's around them. And they can see in 360 degrees around them all the time. So things like roundabouts would probably work better and we might end up seeing a lot more of that sort of thing and traffic might flow better, but we still have to make sure that the traffic, the, the autonomous vehicles behave in a way that is safe and predictable in, uh, in most circumstances where you don't have extra information. And they also have to be able to handle the case where you've got rogue elements introducing bad information or elements that don't tell anything that they're there. Uh, and that isn't necessarily just bad actors with cars with no transponders and things like that. That could be a moose wandering around the town, you know. Anything like that could, could disrupt everything and make these types of control systems not work, which is why for a central traffic system, it really needs to be advisory. Now, you might be wondering how that could possibly improve or even help traffic if you make your traffic system, 
your central system purely advisory? Well, it already works with human drivers. Uh, if you've driven through major metro areas in recent years, you've probably seen a lot of those overhead signs or signs beside of the road that mention incident at such and such or time from here to, to there is X minutes or things like that or uh, what have you. And those are a form of advisory traffic control where it tells you that there's something you might want to avoid. And then you, as the driver, have the option of acting on that information or not. And you may act on it, which means you take a different route, or you may not act on it, in which case you go through the traffic jam at the incident, or you get diverted or something like that. Well, that actually helps because it can take some of the traffic that would ordinarily get caught in the traffic jam and divert it to roads that may not be as congested and then it can allow the major road that's congested to clear a little bit. Now it's not always going to help if you have too much traffic you have too much traffic but the fact that these types of advisory things work to any level with human drivers says that they should work a lot better with autonomous cars with with uh, robot drivers basically because they can take the information in from multiple sources and synthesize it using reasonably straightforward algorithms to you know the same congestion avoidance algorithms GPS is used and so on they can use that to calculate alternate routes and so on and that can uh, th that can certainly improve overall utilization of the road network when you have congestion. But, and, you know, and, and this type of information can be coming from multiple sources. So you could have the cars ahead of you on the road indicating, ooh, the traffic's slowing down. And if you get enough of them saying that, you go, okay, the traffic's slowing down a few miles up the road. Okay, so that sort of thing could potentially work. Now, obviously, for that to really work, we need to crack mesh networking, We really wireless mesh networking, and we, we really haven't yet. Uh, not on a huge scale, which this would have to be, you know, dealing with tens or hundreds of thousands of nodes on the same network, having to passing a non-trivial amount of information around. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, this, the whole safety thing here uh, is that central controlled networks have a major security vulnerability, safety vulnerability, and that's the centrally control the central control system. And a network where, where the uh, automobiles themselves negotiate with each other at intersections instead of following some fixed rules also has the potential for, for problems uh, simply because a bad actor could say, hey, go, and then drive into you. Fortunately, that sort of thing isn't likely to happen as much. So the the autonomous negotiation at the scene of a uh, at the intersection is probably going to work just about as well as humans trying to disambiguate something like that. And one says go, and and then both of them go at the same time or something like that. Uh, but if we take the negotiation aspect out of it so that each individual autonomous vehicle does not trust the information from any source outside of it. Basically, it worked, it worked the same as having a human driver but having a robot instead that can make the decisions potentially faster and doesn't fall asleep, doesn't get bored, just keeps, keeps doing repetitively the, the tediously, terribly boring task of operating an automobile. And then uh, it takes all of the information coming in from various sources, assigns certain trust levels to it, and then makes its decisions based on the trustworthiness of the information it gets. So it might trust, say, a central uh, advisory system for traffic incidents more than, uh, say, two cars on the road saying something, but it might trust 150 cars up the road saying we're all stuck in a traffic jam over a central system. Uh, and But either way, it still has to make its own decisions independently of all the other vehicles on the road, 
using whatever algorithms it wants to use, which may not be the same, but as long as they all conform to the same rules of the road, say the rules we already have for human drivers, as long as they all conform to that, then you'll still have traffic that works and is relatively safe and is probably much safer than if all of the drivers are human. Now, this has the additional advantage that you can transition to it slowly over time as you can introduce autonomous cars while we still have human drivers. And then as more and more of them get on the road, human drivers will actually have a safer experience and the autonomous cars will make, will be probably safer than the humans. So we'll have a steady uh, improvement in road safety. It'll probably do an S, uh, uh, an S curve where uh, you'll have a slow improvement for a while and then a rapid one as you get the breakover on adoption and then it'll level out as as you get the long tail human drivers uh, you know slowly get off the road and there will always be a few cases where you're going to have a human driver on the road uh, because if you're going off in the back of beyond in, in the middle of nowhere probably a human being is going to do better than any machine but for major uh, commuter traffic and so on, the autonomous cars, I think, are going to be a very good uh, end result. As long as we do it right and we don't try to fix everything all at once with one massive major infrastructure consolidation project where we make everything all linked together uh, and talk to each other on the road when we mandate the vehicles have to talk to each other and accept information from each other and all of that nonsense. As long as we don't do that, as long as we keep the autonomous cars autonomous, the self-driving cars driving themselves based on their own perception of the environment around them, as long as we do that, I think we'll have the maximum possible safety uh, situation. We may not have the absolute perfect traffic management situation, but we will have a safe situation insofar as it can be safe. And that is the key thing. The thing to remember for all of the people out there designing these brilliant algorithms for centrally controlled traffic and all of that type of thing, or the cars negotiating with themselves and not having to slow down at intersections and things like that, the thing you need to consider, what happens if something unexpected happens? This is the important thing. And I'm not talking about value judgments or moral judgments in the case of something unexpected happening. What I'm talking about is what happens when something that your fancy algorithm or fancy control system doesn't know about or fail to take into account in its design happens. What if a moose is standing in the intersection and you can't see it? What if, you know, what if any number of things? And that's why a lot of these traffic management things that I see proposed, I know are not ever going to work in the general case. Not when you have random traffic going to random places. Coming from random places. When you can't trust all of the actors to act sanely and act for the greater good of the overall system. So anyway, uh, that's, that's really where I see the safety thing going. We're going to end up with basically what we've got now just with better drivers in control of the machines. And as a result of that, a single machine getting hacked is much less likely to cause mass mayhem than if we try to link everything into one ginormous network and uh, try to control everything centrally or distributed. 
uh, if we try to give it a hive mind or anything like that. I think we're much better off making everything completely autonomous, dealing with information that's available to it, and letting the emergent behavior control the system rather than trying to impose a behavior on the overall network. And quite frankly, it'd be a hell of a lot simpler that way as well. And then we can look at tweaking how things work just the way we do with human drivers. We'll just have different things that could benefit the autonomous drivers versus the human drivers. And we'll figure that out as time passes. Uh, we're pretty good at that. And uh, assuming that we don't end up destroying ourselves or the environment to the point where, where all of this is moot, uh, I think the future with self-driving autonomous cars will look really good as long as we don't try to Internet of Things everything together. Anyway, that's my rant for today on uh, safety and self-driving cars and uh, traffic. Uh, basically, my point we shouldn't be trying to solve traffic by complicated communication protocols and control protocols just because we have the technology coming along where we would potentially be able to implement them. We need to get that technology stable first and find out if we even need to bother with that stuff. And quite frankly, I think it's a dead end, the centrally controlled traffic thing. I think it's a dead end. Same thing as a centrally controlled economy can't work because there's, you can never have enough information to control the economy effectively. It's just not possible to have enough information. I think we have the same problem with traffic. We cannot have enough information. And therefore, a central control system, probably not so beneficial. A central advisory system probably will do everything that a central control system could possibly do and do it without some of the major potential vulnerabilities. Anyway, uh, that's all for this time. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Uh, it won't bother me either way. I don't measure my self-worth by likes or dislikes on YouTube. Uh, but apparently it helps with potential exposure, although Whatever, I don't do this for big bucks. You know, I think I've made a buck fifty over the entire time I've been doing this. Um, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. That's that bell icon that's beside the subscribe thing on the desktop site anyway. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.